Hi, welcome to RMV Chats. I'm Sarah Broughton, Principal of Roland Broughton Architecture and Urban Design. And today I'm super pumped to have Edin Vardy with me. Hi, Edin, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Where are you today? I'm calling in from my home in Basalt. Okay, great. Well, I love your uh, pine beetle kill wall behind you. It's, it's really great. No, thank you. Nice. Um, so Ed and Vardy, we, we have the honor of working with Ed and Vardy as executive director of Farm Collaborative, which is an organization that he founded in 2008 dedicated to solving climate changes. Um, and he also serves as CEO of the Two Forks Club, which is a nonprofit that makes 0% interest loans to uh, burgeoning farmers and local food entrepreneurs. Um, so there is so much going on in Eden's world right now, um, part of which we are working on with him that is so topical to, to today's topics um, of what's happening with the world. So I um, could not be happier to spend a few minutes with you, Eden, um, and, and dive deep on some of these issues. Um, so we'll just jump right in. Does that sound good? Excellent. Yes. Okay. Um, well, as I alluded to, it's hard to imagine uh, that your goal of localized and regionalized food economies, food systems, and food security for the next generation would have become so urgent, uh, which it is. How is the current global pandemic changing your view on the mission? I think it's, it's really just dialing in the urgency of our mission. It hasn't necessarily changed the, the course of our activities or the way that we're accomplishing the mission more just increase the urgency and the need to get this done now. Mm -hmm. How are you doing that? How are you increasing the urgency where, where things are changing so fast? <laughs> um, so we did, in partnership with the Two Forks Club, we launched a, uh, an emergency local food program that is uh, effectively a loan to farmers. And the, the yields of that loan are paid back um, in the form of food to local food pantries. And if, if the farm is able to meet 50% of that in this year, the other 50% of the loan is forgiven. Um, so that's, that's one program that we, we kind of launched in a responsive way and have, have had um, really generous support from the community um, to get off the ground. Um, and then beyond that, it's really increasing the footprint that our farm plays, uh, both as a producer and supporter of our local farms. So mm -hmm. we are, we're definitely scaling up our efforts around our equipment library and making uh, equipment available to our local farmers to be able to grow their own impact and, and make a difference. Um, we recently uh, were lucky to work with uh, Land and Shelter in getting a uh, land use approval for um, seasonal farm worker housing. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's now allowed across Pickering County um, where farms can have a temporary seasonal farm worker housing uh, for the growing season. Um, and we'll be, we will be in the coming years uh, putting together a library to uh, rent out housing units to farmers to be able to increase their impact during the growing season. Um, and, then, uh, and then, of course, for, for me, closest to my heart and, and the project that I'm most excited in <laughs> is the one that we're lucky to do with you guys. And that's mm -hmm. uh, building this food hub uh, and learning center to elevate the impact of our local farmers and of the potential for future generations to be able to enjoy uh, the resources that we have been able to. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm just so grateful to work with you guys. It's, it's really oh. been a gift. We're honored to work with you, and it sounds like um, you've been already making a huge impact, so thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, so as you've alluded to, we're working with you on the design of the Farm Collaborative Learning Center at Cozy Point uh, that's currently going through city approvals. And um, so, you know, as we've been going through this design and the planning, um, how do you think this facility will strengthen your mission um, and, and, and talk about some more of that outreach to the community that we are planning into this building? So first and foremost, the center will allow us to really effectively, uh, more effectively carry out the programs that we are today. Uh, our youth programs, Earth Keepers Community Day Camp, which is happening right now at a, albeit a significantly reduced capacity given coronavirus impacts. Um, and uh, and that, actually, that program was actually started by John Denver, so we're really excited to carry the torch on that. Um, and having a, a, a more centralized uh, educational learning facility for that uh, it's really going to increase the impact of that program and effectiveness. And then all the other programs that we do through the year in partnership with the schools, uh, with the greater community, um, through our events, as well as our farm to table programming, will be substantially um, uh, just be able to, to be carried out more efficiently and effectively as a result of this 
uh, facility. Right now we operate out of a diversity of somewhat makeshift structures that were um, scattered throughout the site really in response to our programs um, and being able to, to effectively replace all of those with one beautiful, meaningful piece of infrastructure is just really going to increase the impact of our currently existing programs. It's also going to allow us to further support our local farmers. We will have a learning kitchen in the facility that will be able uh, to be used by our local farmers as well to process their goods and increase the longevity of their production. Uh, the basement of the facility is also being designed really thoughtfully mm -hmm. as a root cellar. And mm -hmm. so we will have a, a very significant footprint of root cellar space for our own farm pro products, as well as for those of our local farmers to increase the resiliency of our local food economy at large and have much more food available to us when there is snow on the ground. So that's very exciting. That's amazing. Um, quick question, you know, uh, what, what are your two recommendations that, that people should just start planting now in their own backyard, on their decks, anywhere? What, what, what's just good things to have growing? <laughs> um, some of my favorites, the, what I consider to be some of the easier ones that grow fast, grow well, and also have great nutritional quality, mm -hmm. uh, radish. Um, mm -hmm. I specifically really like the French breakfast radish. Um, and you can get several harvests in a growing season, even in our climate. Uh, you can grow them anywhere. They do really, really well. Um, so I'd certainly recommend that. They're also very effective at prepping the soil for future plants as well. So plant some radishes. Um, okay. I'm also a big fan of arugula. Um, mm -hmm. Arugula is, is our um, biggest seller at the Aspen Saturday Market. Um, mm -hmm. It's also, um, unbeknownst to many, one of the easier uh, greens to grow. Um, so. Um, Continue to buy our arugula or grow your own. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just named two of my favorite things. So, so I'm in. I, I love both of, both of those things. So thanks for your tip on that. Um, and again, we're just so excited to be working with you on, on this learning center. And it's, it's, it's going to be very humble, um, net zero, um, you know, in terms of the design of the building. Uh, but I think in, in its humility, um, is a beacon of, of hope, I think, and optimism for our community in terms of, like you're saying, uh, the regeneration and the sustainability um, aspects for our food um, and for our, our population. So thank you so much about that. Um, so switching gears a little bit, you, you had a huge honor last year. Governor uh, Jared Polis appointed you, I think, um, unrequested, <laughs> appointed you as a Colorado Parks and Wildlife Commissioner. Uh, so congratulations um, on that. Um, and when you first started, um, you had a goal of bringing in the voice of young agrarians and working on the balance of nature and farming. You now are one and a half years in uh, to your role on this commission. Um, curious to know what you're learning uh, by being on this commission and what are the current conversations in light of our global pandemic? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, I, we actually, I just got off the commission meeting uh, just an hour before our meeting here today with you. Oh good, um, this is hot off the press, okay. The press. And, uh, <laughs> and I, was, I was really moved uh, to tears by some of the words of our fellow commissioners and, uh, and leadership staff. Uh, just the the intent statement um, followed by really you know the the, the pathway to action uh, for diversity and inclusion and and, mm. and put doing mm. our part in, mm. uh, in, um, in really addressing what we're facing. I, I you know I, I I think that what we're seeing on a global level today is is really a symptom of, of so much yeah. um, and coming together and, and a sense of collaboration is is our pathway out of it. And, uh, and I'm proud to see that Parks and Wildlife is doing their part in that as well. And increasing increasing the, the access to the outdoors for people of all demographics. Yeah. Um, we have a, a you know, fellow commissioner, Taisha Adams, who's uh, made that her, her, her kind of calling and is doing a really effective job at it. Um, and it's, it's being carried out uh, up through the leadership and, and really being driven by leadership. Um, we're lucky to have a, a very, very forward thinking inclusive and compassionate governor that's leading the charge on that. That is amazing, Ed, and thank you for sharing that. I know that I've been involved in, in quite a few discussions uh, with AIA, because um, I'm the Colorado West director um, and on the Colorado State Board, and, um, and same, same feelings as, as you, just, just 
just the the sense of urgency around this and and also the um the optimism and and just knowing that we can make a change and, and if we and if we all collaborate together we we will make change and so it's a uh, it's really it's really amazing and so it's great to hear and you thought you were going to be talking about nature and farming um <laughs> and uh but but that is nature and farming right that that's uh, really really what it's all about um so the project um that you were assigned to do to increase regenerative agriculture and carbon uh, sequestration in china is that happening is it on hold like where where does this fit into your uh, already pretty full agenda. So that was that was a, a recent honor um, was to be selected as one of two agriculture fellows by the Eisenhower Fellowship, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and this this particular program uh, sends a total of nine people, two farmers, to China uh, to work on cross cultural collaboration, uh, starting at some of the highest levels, um, and um, and I was I'm really honored and grateful to have been. Uh, accepted into that uh, or, or selected for that program um, to bring carbon sequestration uh, to China and, and also to, to develop a partnership for the type of facility that we're working with you guys on um, yeah. and, and identifying potential future resources for creating a sister kind of facility in China. Um, China in specific because China is the leading emitter of global greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and so if, if, uh, if when China demonstrates uh, agricultural carbon sequestration, uh, it will really have ripple effects to the rest of the world. Um, when that, you know, those that are contributing the most are, are taking the most active steps in, in addressing it, and um, and and that's really kind of at the root of of what the intentions of the Farm Collaborative were from the beginning. Um, today, when we look at our global greenhouse gas emissions and their sources, there is anywhere between 30 and 60 percent of all global greenhouse gases but in some way are tied to our food system. Mm -hmm. So that's when you take the impacts of growing food, um, creating the, the packaging and the distribution mechanisms, uh, all the way through to the refrigeration, storage, transportation, everything involved in our food system accounts for between 30 and 60%, also when you take into account meat production. Um, and so another way of saying that is, is our greatest contributor to the future um, challenges that our, our children generation will face is really coming from the way that we are nourishing ourselves yeah. um, and uh, and also the source of creativity right food is is that first fundamental need um, maybe food and shelter together are those those mm -hmm. fundamental needs where it's it's not just a fundamental need but it's also that intersection point of art and creativity mm -hmm. and so the source of our creativity and the source of our nourishment is what's causing challenges for future generations um, to me, it feels like it's, it's really important that we are proactive about that right now. And the good news is that if we do agriculture just in a slightly different way, proven techniques that have been done and implemented for millennia, much, much longer, in fact, than the way that we're doing our food production right now, which is mm -hmm. contributing to this challenge. If we can just reposition and do, do our food production more aligned with those methodologies, local-based agricultural methodologies, agricultural methodologies, that focus on the longevity and the health of our soil, mm -hmm. then we not only decrease the carbon emissions on the front end, um, but we actually put it back in the soil on the back end. So actually take it out of the atmosphere and put it back in the soil where it belongs. And in that process uh, is really a, a, a very positive way to turn around climate change and to have mm -hmm. a lot of fun and enjoy in the meantime. Mm -hmm. and so, um, so yes, that's what we're actively taking on here in the Roaring Fork Valley. And, and what our organization has been uh, privileged to be selected to engage in uh, in China. In terms of if it's gonna happen this year, it's still scheduled to. It was yeah. originally scheduled to take place in June. Uh, yeah. That has since been pushed back to October. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't happen this year, then it will carry over to next year. Are the same, um, are the same efforts being done nationally? Are, do you have counterparts that are working with our government on, on the same initiatives? So the, 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 the cohort that is going to China is representing all, all different demographics. There's um, a, a brilliant lady that's uh, a, a leader in the VA that's going and looking at um, some of the, the, the healthcare ramifications um, mm -hmm. taking place in other, place, you know, other countries. There's uh, individuals that are exploring um, uh, uh, how um, arts are being uh, represented in marginalized communities mm -hmm. in Asia. 
Um, so it's, it's a, a really, really great and significant cross section, everything from AI to agriculture um, just going together. Um, there are parts of it where we will all be in the same place, meeting with the same people, and then parts where everyone distributes to uh, various regions and, and dives in deeper on their own. Wow. Can't wait to hear more about that um, when that hope and hopefully you were able to go this fall um, because that 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 is I would put that in the urgent category um, <laughs> uh, in terms of um, of uh, what what we're doing to our to our mother earth um, with what we're eating and you're right with, uh, with the nourishment component of it. I don't think many of us think about it, but I think we're thinking about it more, um, which leads me to a really exciting thing that you just told me before we got on the air that you have now joined um, Farm Collaborative with Edible Aspen, uh, the magazine. And so I'm really excited for you um, and what an amazing um, multi-platform vehicle for you to, to speak about these things. What, what, what drove you to, to partner, um, acquire, and what are you most excited about that, that venture? So Lisa Houston, Lisa and Sam Houston, uh, it was their generous gift that made this possible. Mm. Um, and, um, and the legacy that Lisa created with that exceptional magazine is what, what led me to be inspired to want to carry it forward. It's such a meaningful uh, communication method for uh, engaging people with the local food system in such a positive and fun way. And, um, and, and so with our, with our goal of increasing food resiliency in our region, uh, and then using that as a template to increase food resilience everywhere, um, and especially with the urgency of, of localized food resiliency becoming much more apparent now as we're seeing uh, systemic breakdowns in, in our transportation distribution systems um, has, has really increased the value of, of finding these solutions and spreading them now. And so getting to host the magazine in a, in, in a new um, uh, under that, under this new leadership, we'll still have Lisa heavily involved. Mm -hmm. um, will allow us to dive in a little deeper on some of the climate solutions related to agriculture, as well as some of the youth opportunities and engaging children with their food system. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very excited to be moving forward with that. We'll be publishing the first issue right around the time when we host our community dinner in this, this at the end of this growing season. Do you have a date on that yet that we can? The community Talk dinner is scheduled for November 20th. Okay. Um, we are exploring whether it's going to be feasible to host that dinner in person this year, or mm -hmm. if it will be similar to last year's farm to fridge. Um, for those that, that have come to the farm to table free community meal, um, we've loved hosting it at Jerome. It's been exceptional. And just, yeah. we, we feel so lucky to be able to host it there and, um, and keeping safety and, and kind of the well-being of everyone in mind. Um, we're certainly considering uh, doing a second year of the farm to fridge option and increasing efforts with local food pantries as well and, and making that even bigger than we had it last year to get everyone the food that they need to have a meal together but separately. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well I like that November 20th I've written down uh, some good some good nuggets from this chat. Well Edin thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. Thank you for being you. Thank you for everything you're doing. Um, we're here to help you, so, so keep asking, and, and thank you um, for these huge efforts, um, not only locally, uh, but globally. Um, so really, really appreciate you. Thank you, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful again to work with you and John and Scott and the entire team at Roland Broughton to bring this mission forward. So we are all doing it together, and, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Stronger together, for sure. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for tuning in to r &B Chats. And bye, Ed, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. <laughs>